we are recording this for, uh, I apologize for that. No, we missed your welcome, Joanne, sorry. Um, um, I'm much better about that usually, but I was distracted by something shiny. So we will uh, get this recorded, posted along with the slides, along with all of the questions and answers that come in today and those that came in ahead of time. We're gonna do our best to answer all the questions that came in ahead of time. There were a few that were not related to the topics we're covering today, but we will still answer those on the spreadsheet when we get that all posted. So we'll do our best to get everything posted for you by end of next week and get a message out to campus for that. All right, so feel free to use that Q&A and Pamela and I will get back to you on those, um, on anything you've got uh, questions about in there. If I think we're gonna get to it, I might just let you know that. And uh, there might be a question that you have, I think it'd be valuable for the whole group. And I will um, pause the presentation and we'll get those answered as well. All right, so I am going to introduce the team now. Uh, so again, I'm Carrie Metters. I'm the Senior Director of Technology and Training here in UP. I'm thrilled to introduce Tali Quinones. She is our new manager for Organizational Development and Enrichment Programs. And she'll be leading the bulk of the presentation today. I know many of you know Tamela Sullivan. She's been with us for a number of years as our coordinator for training events and anti-racism programming. And then our other team member couldn't be with us today, uh, Maggie Carrera. I think many of you have probably worked with her as well. She's our coordinator for online training and compliance. So you're gonna hear a lot more about compliance training here in just a minute, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn things over to Holly. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It's really nice to be here and meet some of you virtually and see some familiar faces. Um, but I am excited to tell you about all the new things and things that we're enhancing. But I'm going to start off with compliancy training um, first. It's going to take all of our commitment um, to really maintain the safe and thriving environment that we have here at San Jose State. And so with that, that comes with completing compliance trainings. And I will totally understand that it's not the most glamorous time um, to do those. However, it's really, really important that we do get them done. So um, my team, we're looking at our new employees and then within that first 14 days, we're really encouraging them to finish that training. So any of you MPPs out there, please allow them enough time to get that done. But we're also opening up commute, computer labs for everybody who has not got their um, compliance training done. They're going to be every second Tuesday afternoon and every third Thursday morning of every month. Um, we'll send invites, personal calendar invites to those who have not completed the compliance training yet. But if you have any questions, let us know. We really just want to support you all and support our campus and continue to make this a safe place for everybody, not only our students. So with that, let's look at what we actually need to do. <laughs> Um, this will be out on our website eventually, but for now, uh, this just gives you kind of a glance of things that everybody needs to do. You'll notice that the first three on here have to be completed every two years. The only one that needs to be completed annually, excuse me, annually is our gender equity and Title IX. Um, generally, they take a couple less than an hour or an hour. There's only one that really takes two hours. So plan accordingly to these. Um, and then like at the bottom there, you have the two that are only one time courses that you've got to complete while you're here at San Jose State. Oh, I just uh, want to jump in. Are there, there's some courses that may be specific to the work that someone does, right? So they would be assigned those courses because of what they're doing these are these are generally the ones that we all have to do then there's specific ones for different areas right yes and we will have that broken down on our website um, here in the very near future where you can see based off of your position which ones that you need to do and it has the same information as well the course length and frequency um, but yeah but all of these trainings are really important to the work that we do here so it's strongly encouraged that everybody take a look and see what we need to get done all right, did I miss anything? All right. Um, so I feel very fortunate that I came into this role um, with already some gratitude programming set up. Um, I did put a pause on it for just a little bit so that I could work on expanding it. Um, I really, really believe that gratitude and appreciation are an important aspect of any work environment. So. 
reintroducing the Spartan Step and Beyond. It is active again, and you can go out to the website and submit your recognitions. Um, but the purpose of Spartan Step and Beyond program is really to foster that culture of appreciation and gratitude and recognize and celebrate everybody and their contributions to our community. So if you go to the website, it gives you an example of kind of what we're looking for when you're recognizing somebody. Um, I, we are going to send them a personal certificate with the words that you have given them and a personal thank you um, just to show them that we appreciate them too and their contributions here from the UP. Um, let me see if I missed anything on that. And I did put the link to the Spartan Stepping Beyond page in the chat. I know you can't copy and paste from the chat the way this webinar is set up, but you can click it and should be able to open it and save it from there. We'll include all of the um, all of the URLs that we showed today. I'll include those in the slides that we post. Thank you. And speaking of appreciation, can I just say how grateful and how much I appreciate all the people that I've got to meet during this We Are All Spartans campaign. Um, I'm very new. I've been here a little over two months, and this was one of the first things that I jumped into. And I got to interview a lot of you and get to know you and find out more about what you do here at San Jose State. So I cannot thank you enough for allowing me into your space and letting me know who you all are. And so I'm really excited to give this out to the community so they can all see um, who we are as Spartans. So the purpose of We Are All Spartans campaign was to really showcase our dedicated staff and managers um, to the community. And so you should have gotten an email this week with a message from our president that kind of explained it as well and kicked it off. And then next week, we go ahead and submit our first video out to all of you. So please watch it. I'm really, really excited about this first video um, and this whole thing. And just to let you know, we're going to continue this campaign. But right now, we have a lot of videos that we're editing. Um, so we need to get some of that work done uh, first, and then we'll go back to interviewing and things like that. So if you're interested, please check out that email you got this week, fill out the form, and I'll reach out to you all when we're ready to commence again, okay? I'm like really excited. I, I have not seen the videos at all, and I'm so excited to see them. So I can't wait. It starts next week, right? You'll post the first video next week? Yep, next week. Great. And I got to see it, and it's fabulous. I oh, love that's it. very cool. Okay. <laughs> Looking forward to it. All right. Well, I'll pass this back over to Carrie. All right. Thank you, Holly. Yes, I'm terribly excited about the We Are All Spartans campaign as well. Uh, I have also seen the first video and it is fantastic. Uh, I thought our, the video from our president was equally fantastic. So we're very excited to roll these out to the campus so y'all can get to know each other a little bit better and understand better what everybody does on campus. So with Holly just joining us, as she said, she's just been here a little over two months. It feels like a lot longer because she's done so many things already. But one of the things we've been looking at is our website. And the professional development area of our website has kind of been buried. It's been under the, it's currently under the My Info menu on our website. So we are in the middle of a project working with our web developer here to move the professional development information to the main navigation. This is just a mock-up. It will look a little nicer when it's in the real world. This is just a mock-up, but uh, it will basically replace the My Info menu. What's currently under My Info will be moved to a few other menus like My Career and under Resources. And then Professional Development will sit in that main navigation at the top of the page. So you'll be able to get to it um, a lot more easily. And everything related to training will be there, everything related to development. Um, including the compliance training that Holly spoke about earlier. It will also include things like Spartan Stepping Beyond, We Are All Spartans, our service celebration information. All of that will be included under this menu. So we're we're making it a lot more robust, making it a lot more user user friendly, I would say, and getting a lot more information out there for you. So coming soon, I don't have a date yet. We will certainly um, you know send out a communication once everything is updated. Along with that, because we only have so much you know, space across the top there, we are removing the My Info menu completely. And we're gonna rename tools and resources to just be resources. We're also removing news menu and we will move that under resources. It'll be like the first thing you see under resources. So we're just kind of shifting things around a little bit to make it make a little bit more sense, get things in a little better order. And uh, we will hopefully have those out to you by the Sometime in October, we're hoping to have all of that done. 
and get that out so that you can get to that information a little more easily. So stay tuned for more on that, but we're excited to, um, to make these improvements to our website for you. And now back to you, Holly. So with that professional development, you know, one of my priorities is to find every opportunity that I can for the campus. And so we have actually been able to join the CSU cross campus collaboration. Um, this will eventually live on our website, but for now it'll be in the next training Tuesday. Um, it's a bunch of classes and courses from our uh, fellow CSU campuses, and it ranges things from soft skill like conflict management all the way to like harder technical skills like Excel um, tips and tricks. So please look at this. We'll include the link as well today for you, but please sign up for these and participate. I plan to continue this endeavor and, and encourage us to also participate in this as um, presenters. So we will be doing our customer service training within the cross campus. So for those of you who signed up in October, we will have other CSU people in there as well joining us. So it'll be a great time to collaborate and meet some of our peers at other campuses. And so professional development as a whole, um, it's a big topic. And so there are a lot of different things that I hope to see and, and do as well. But for now, um, for the whole community, I'm really gonna focus on spotlighting that professional development on the UP website. So Carrie and everybody is really helping to bring that front and center. Um, I would like to also collaborate with all of you who are super talented and have lots of information and skills that you can also bring to this campus. Um, so I, would love to hear more from all of you. And I've heard from some of you who have some certain skill sets that I'd like to bring to the top and shine as well and share with our community. And then another thing that I would really like to focus on with my team is creating guides for online resources, um, kind of according to skills and career paths. I've worked with a couple of MPPs who had staff members who had specific things that they wanted to learn, like public speaking or project management. And so I was happy to compile um, resources from LinkedIn Learning and CSU Learn um, so that they can give that to their staff. So if you have certain ideas or skill sets that you would like um, your team, please let me know so that I can start working on prioritizing building some of that. Because um, I think it's really important that you are not necessarily using your time to go find all of that, but to have it available to you so that you can do that. So that's something that I'm working on within professional development. And then some of the questions that we got in from um, the pre-survey was about faculty and professional development. And I would really like to highlight the Center for Faculty Development. I'm excited to collaborate and build a relationship and work with them. Um, however, they have great resources already for all of you. So I really strongly recommending that you connect with them. They have resources on teaching and learning, some of that career planning for our faculty, and then resources and support for research, scholarship, and creative activities. So if you haven't checked it out, please connect with them um, for professional development if you're faculty. I just wanted to uh, also just jump in. Uh, so the, the things that we just saw about the cross-campus collaboration, I mean, that, those are open to faculty, obviously, as well, right? So it's, Yes, everybody. Make sure everybody's clear on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then also underneath my team is the newsletters. So hopefully you all are reading them and opening them up. Um, they put a lot of work into these newsletters weekly, um, just to give you a bi-weekly newsletter. So there's a training Tuesday with anything professional development. Um, again, this is where the cross um, campus collaboration will live for the meantime, and we'll continue to keep it in there. So if you ever need it, it'll eventually fall to the bottom in the reminders, so you know. And then our well-being Wednesday because we need to holistically support your health and well-being. Um, so there's a lot of great things in there that we, we do. We try to theme it around Awareness Month themes. So if you kind of see that and you're like, what are these? That's what we're trying to do. Um, in addition to that, though, there's a lot of on-campus and off-campus events that we try to showcase and highlight because we want you to get out and do things and be social. Um, and so we really like highlighting those events as well. All right, and then the newest one that some of you may have got is the Leadership Monthly, which will be coming out next week. Um, this is sent to MPPs. I'm 
you know, as somebody who's been a leader in the student affairs side, I think it's really important that we learn and grow and continue to have resources um, at our fingertips. And so that's kind of where this newsletter was born of. Um, so I will continue to do that. If you have feedback or anything, please let me know. I'm happy to to take that in and see what I can do. There's always an interactive component, so I'm encouraging you all to do it. There's a jam board in our last one um, where you can give some words of encouragement and inspiration. And then our upside um, quarterly is sent to all employees. This is our depart UP department newsletter. Um, and so you should have, I felt like I just saw that one come out um, this week too. So um, please read them. A lot of work goes into them and we appreciate um, we appreciate you reading them. Oh, with that, I will give this to Tamala. Hello, welcome everyone. Um, it is that time of year for Open Enrollment and the Employee Benefits and Services Fair. So Open Enrollment is from Monday, September 18th through Friday, October 13th. This is a time for you to make any changes to your health benefits. Open Enrollment will be taking place during the Employee Benefits and Services Fair. The fair will take place on Tuesday, September 26th from 10 to 2 in the Student Union Ballroom. There is going to be about 70 vendors and in attendance. And of the 70 vendors, we have two new vendors, I mean, sorry, 10 new vendors that will be attending as well. This is a great opportunity for you to meet your health providers and talk with your UP benefit representatives. Unfortunately, I'm sad to say, uh, Blue Shield of California, Anthem Blue Cross, CalPERS and Nationwide will not be in attendance, but they do have um, contact information where you can reach out to them anytime. So we'll see you there. Um, when you attend, remember to bring your Tower ID card to be placed into a drawing for some giveaways. So we can't wait to see you in about three weeks. Wow, is it really only three weeks away? Three weeks away. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, and I just want to also, um, speaking to the supervisors, please encourage your staff, allow them time to come. It's a really great time for us all to network and get to see each other, as well as this is really important information for our staff's well-being um, and to understand what they have available to them. Um, and I will be there kind of emceeing some of the stuff. So please come and introduce yourself to me in real life. I would love to meet all of you um, as well. So We'll see you in three weeks. I can't believe it's three weeks, but we'll see you in three weeks then. All right. Um, with that onboarding, um, as many of you know, I hope I got here right when everything went back in person for a new employee orientation. So I know nothing else, but um, I was told that it was recently put back in person. And so just to let everybody know, um, every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 12, we have a new employee orientation. Your new employees will receive an email to the email address that they applied at San Jose State, and then they'll receive a calendar invite. If their SJSU email is already set up, we just use their SJSU email so that you can see it on your staff's calendar that that's where they're going to be on Wednesday morning. Um, if not, we do send it to their personal one. But just to give you a heads up about that. And this new employee orientation is for staff, MPPs, 12-month faculty, and our coaches. Um, just want to put out there, though, that the 12-month faculty um, is also included in the orientation for Center for Faculty Development, um, but we invite them as well uh, to ours. And then some of you had asked about the general topics that are covered, so I'll just let you know that we introduce them to the CSU system, talk about us and our culture and our structure, give them resources that we think will help them at this time, not to overwhelm them, um, and then go over general payroll benefits. Um, sorry, go over payroll and benefit essentials and make sure that they're getting connected to the right people if they have further questions. And then, of course, I'm going to promote training and development as that is something that is really at the top of what I want to focus on. Um, so we let them know all of those things. And with that, I'm actually going to show you, we did some work on our web pages. So for our new employees, this is what we would like for um Anybody who's hiring, if you're sending out communication, please direct your staff to this web page. Um, it starts off with a beautiful video from our president welcoming them to uh, San Jose State University. And then it's broken down into four steps of what they need to do getting started. And so it's a really great place to just kind of give some focus and direction for those new people. 
And then with that, for new employee orientation, if you have any questions or if you want to share this with new staff, we broke it down into what to expect, what it looks like. Um, again, going into more detail of what we cover um, and then the learning and where the journey starts. So we're trying to do a lot in the website. Um, let us know if you have any questions or anything like that. And so uh, before you go, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, I'm, I'm so excited that we're going back, that we've gone back to the live onboarding. Uh, I think it's just really important for that um, in-person connection with our new employees coming on board so that they, you know, see real faces and people and get to know us, uh, you know, more personally. So super excited about this. And so for uh, supervisors and managers out there, you know, this is an important aspect of uh, the new employee experience, right? Having them uh, be welcomed into our campus community and receiving information that's going to get them off, uh, you know, started on the right foot. Um, and as we all know, San Jose State can be a little overwhelming and complex. So we really want to um, make sure that they're getting all the tools they need to be successful and a good welcome too. So I'm glad that we're live. Yeah. And we've been surveying those who did the new employee orientation and we've got a lot of feedback about how they feel welcomed and how much they appreciate that in-person aspects and that energy. And they've been able to socialize and make friends. Even I did. I was here and went to NEO as the employee. And now I have coffee dates with some of the people who are in my um, NEO. So yes, please encourage that. And that's actually a great segue. Um, so some of the future goals, I would really like to expand that onboarding and have community building at the forefront. Um, we recently went to a webinar and I heard some great ideas there and I've talked to other individuals um, like, speed networking so that we can get to know people and um, we would like to take some of the new staff around to walk around campus walk around downtown because we all have discounts in certain places down there if we show our tower id and so what better way to welcome somebody than be like let's go check out some of those places so community building is really a top priority in expanding that onboarding um, so that everybody feels that sense of belonging and valued here in our community and then continue that support in completing the mandatory compliance training. It's really important that we help maintain the safe campus community. And so whatever we can do to expand that and support you all, um, we definitely want to do. And then also I'm working on building resources and tools for our supervisors to help with onboarding. I know that there are a lot of different components and pieces and we're not trained on these things. So if I can offer you resources, I definitely will. Um, and so that's going to be a priority. And then in our um, the questions that you guys sent in, you some of you mentioned about those who started during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And yeah, absolutely. Like you came in at a time and just joined us all virtually and now we're back and, and you kind of been thrown in there and that's, that's okay. But we wanna make sure that you know that you're still a part of the community. Let's reconnect and thrive together. And so I would like to create some programming that focuses on that, maybe similar to the community building that we'll be doing in the um, expanding of onboarding. So please know that you are definitely on my thoughts um, and I will work with my team to see what we can do. And then I would like to create a communication plan and resources for regular outreach to our new employees. Cause let's face it, Six months, three months is not enough, no matter how much we feel like we've been here. Um, that first year is really critical. Um, and so we want to make sure that we're checking in regularly, that we're providing resources at the right time instead of overwhelming you all at the beginning and expecting you to remember that that was sent in an email. Um, I promise you'll never get an email from me that says, per my last email, um, because that's pointless. I'm going to, per on purpose, make sure that you're getting it in these timely fashion. So that's a, just some overview. I'm sure there'll be more projects that come out of this as well. And especially as I connect with all of you and get your feedback and learn more about your journey here at SJSU. Um, but for now, here's a glimpse of what I'm really looking at in the next year. Okay. Oh, so I'll give it to you, Carrie. <laughs> You went fast. I know. Um, Sorry, I talk so fast. <laughs> that's okay. Because there's a few questions that have come in. We've been, and Tamil and I have been answering them. Um, but I did want to let everybody know we are, we will post the recording for this as well as the slides and the QA 
on our UP Town Hall webpage, which I'm going to put in the chat. And you can click there. It's on our website. It's currently under the news menu. <laughs> it will move to the new professional development menu once we get that set up. But it's currently under the news menu on our website. So we will uh, be posting everything there. Likely, uh, my goal is to get it done by the end of next week. And once we get it posted, we will also send out a communication to let everyone know it's ready so that you're not just sitting there refreshing every day, okay? I just wanted to maybe just uh, add, follow up on that last, all the topics you were talking about that last slide, because I think it's so important. Onboarding is super important for our campus. And I saw in the q and I think I saw someone mention about uh, people who started during COVID and having, allowing them to come, you know, be involved with that onboard. I think that's really important. So, I mean, we were all new at one point in time. So we, and some of us are probably still feeling new, right? Um, because there's so much to learn, so much to understand about San Jose State and all the processes. So your ideas are super uh, helpful to us and your feedback. Um, and we are looking to, if you read the last newsletter, we are looking to put out a survey this fall where we want you to have comment on our services, including learning development, also give us ideas. What are your views? What are your ideas? What do you think would be helpful to uh, the San Jose State community? What What is helpful for new employees to know and understand? And I saw somebody's comment about the, you know, having a campus tour, which is, you know, something that we're trying to institute. It, it's, it's overwhelming to come to the campus and kind of be dropped in and not know where everything is. Uh, I've mentioned at different times. I've been here, I don't know, almost eight years, I guess. And I still find places I didn't know existed. So I think that's really, really important. Those types of things are important to our new employees. So all the ideas that you have, all the experiences that you experience as a new employee are really going to help us. And it's going to inform us about how to develop our new, more robust onboarding experience for employees throughout the first year of their employment. Because as Holly said, um, giving people information on day one can be very, very overwhelming. And then leaving them is, is really not the best way to have them acclimated to our campus community. So all your ideas are really welcome. And, and thank you so much for contributing uh, to us learning what we can do. Thank you, Joanne. Um, so there've been, there been a number of questions that have come in that are for benefits or for um, a couple of other areas. So we will ask our experts in those areas to get back to uh, to respond to those questions on our Q&A sheet because we don't want to give you incorrect information. We want to make sure you're getting the right information. Got a lot of feedback in here about uh, thank you for thinking about the folks who were hired in the pandemic. So that's great. It's um, I think it's something we knew that we had not done enough, but we but until Holly came, I don't think we could really articulate what we needed to do. So we appreciate those of you that asked the questions and that gave us feedback on that. That was really great. Um, I'm gonna read a couple of these questions that have, that have come in, Holly. So there was a question about orientation for employees who transfer within SJSU. Their original orientation might be dated so they could benefit from a brief refresher. So any thoughts on that? Yeah, in all honesty, the orientation is open to everybody in the community. If you mm -hmm. wanted a refresher, I am happy to invite you to it. Also, you can provide feedback. Like, I believe in the cross-communication. That that's how we improve. That's how we do things. Um, and since my position is very new, you know, it's a great time to change things and shake things up. And I appreciate Maggie and Tam's endless patience with me as I continue to shake things up as well. Um, so yes, if you want to come to it, please feel free to send me an email or send me a Gchat. I'm happy to invite you to it and put you on the next one, um, get that calendar invite to you. And just know I'm going to ask for feedback though, too, because I, I, I need that very much so. Yeah, that's, that's a great, a great idea to have. I mean, anybody can go. We'd love to get your feedback, you know, from those of you who've been here 20 years, those of you who've been here 20 days, you know, it's equally important that we hear from everybody. And um, as long as we've got space, you can come. So yeah. we, so far we've had space, so you're, you should be good. Uh, so that's a great suggestion. Thank you for bringing that up. All right, so as I mentioned, we're going to get all the questions that y'all have put through on, our, on a spreadsheet and with all the answers, we'll get those posted. Uh, we are planning another town hall for later this fall. I don't have a date yet for you or a topic, but that'll be coming soon. 
Uh, we do have a lot of different email addresses in our unit, as you can see, but we try that just to help us keep things organized better. So uh, we've got our UP hyphen training email that you can contact anything related to training and professional development. Um, everyone on the team has access to that email. So you might hear from Holly, you might hear from Tamala, you might hear, okay, you probably won't hear from me because they, they, they're they the experts now. I just, I just let them do their work. Um, unless they're all at a conference or something, then you might hear from me, which will, which will be fun for everyone, I'm sure. Um, but if it's specific to compliance training, definitely use that CSU Learn email because we really do try to keep that separate from that. Uh, it's not that we wouldn't answer the question if you send it to the other email, but it just helps us keep things a little bit better organized. So that one's just CSU Learn at SPSU. That one's pretty easy. Then anything related to well-being, we've got a separate UB, UP well-being email address as well. So feel free to use those, reach out, reach out to Holly directly, Tamala or Maggie or me, any of us. I'm gonna put uh, all of those emails, well, Holly's and the rest of them in here. Um, and we'll, again, they'll all be on the slides. So you'll be able to see those as we send them out. But so we're very excited about building this, this area up. We've been wanting to do it for a, a number of years. Joanne and I have been talking about this particular position for well over a year. So we're very happy to uh, finally get someone on board uh, that can really take us where we want to go. Uh, we are also in the process of refilling our analyst position. Our prior analyst, some of you may have known, Elizabeth Escobar, she left us in May. And so we are now able to refill that position. So we're excited to get that position back on board. That will help with some of the uh, logistical tasks and uh, things like that. So you'll be hearing another name come from our unit fairly soon. So we're excited about everything coming up, excited about the opportunities, and um, look forward to being able to meet and greet with some of you along the way. But uh, we're happy to answer any more questions. We scheduled this for an hour. Um, most of our town halls have had a lot of information, a lot of questions. So you never know how long it's going to go. We're happy to answer any other questions that you have while we're here. Uh, otherwise, I think that's the end of our content today. Joanne, I don't know if you had any. Well, I just want, I'm looking at some of the questions uh, here in the Q&A. I just want to comment on uh, you know, a couple of, I, I, first of all, I love that people are interacting and, and throwing out some ideas. And I was just looking at the one, how about a staff employee showcase? Staff can share unique projects and innovations in their offices. So these are, that's fabulous idea. I love that. There's so much talent on this campus. Uh, whether it's faculty, staff, or you or whoever, there's so much that's been on top, I think, as far as us all kind of sharing that together. Um, so the more that we can uh, bring in that talent to share with each other, I think the better. And that's also one of the, the reasons why we wanted to get the We Are All Spartans uh, campaign up and running, because um, I think we're going to learn a lot about each other and things that we just didn't realize and secret treasures of people that we have on campus that we just didn't know. Um, so the more you give us these ideas, the better. And as Carrie said, this has been um, a project. Having a one a person who's dedicated just to this has been something that we really have been trying to get done for a while. And so we're super super excited that Holly's here. And to that end, I just I don't know. I know Holly, you've been talking to different people, but do you want to give us a little bit more of your background? I think it's kind of interesting to know like where you started, where you came from. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I hit on the spot or anything, but no, I'll put on the spot. <laughs> it is absolutely okay. Um, I'm, the, my shot, so. I'm, not, I'm really not. That's probably years of doing student orientation. Yeah. <laughs> totally not. Um, so I, as I said, I, I recently transitioned away from student affairs. So I, um, for the last decade, I have worked with students. I started in financial aid and then went over to student services and then academic advising. And prior to starting at San Jose State University, I was the director of student services and academic advising at a community college. Um, I absolutely loved the work that I did. I have my master's degree in academic advising. Um, so it was all that I ever wanted to do, but I found that I was really focusing on developing the professionals um, because I believe in the individuals who make things happen on this campus. And, and I've seen across my career the amazing talent that has just burnt out or hasn't had the opportunities to continue to grow because of the lack of resources. Um, so with that, I made the really hard decision a few months ago to leave that side of higher education um, and come over here um, to really provide structure and, and opportunities wherever I can to, to the people who make this 
work. Like our students couldn't do it without our tremendous um, and amazing staff and faculty. And so whatever I can do to support that um, and also disrupt the system and, and make good things happen and good changes, um, that's what I want to do. So I am happy to be on this side. I miss the students. I'm very fortunate to have a student worker so that I can still get that. Um, but I understand a lot of perspectives. So feel free to talk to me, ask me questions, give me feedback. Um, I want to make this for you all. Um, and I can't do that without your voices. So it is always welcomed in my space. And I just, there was just a question that I answered on the chat about someone was trying to register for one of the um, cross campus courses and in CSU Learn it said there was nothing scheduled. So if, if you're trying to register for one of those courses that's listed and you get any kind of error, or any kind of message, uh, feel free to email our UP hyphen training email address, then we can follow up. It could just be that the campus offering that doesn't have anything scheduled right now, but they may have something later in the year. But we can always follow up and find out if there's an actually a problem or if something is um, going to be scheduled later. They may be able to tell us when they're going to schedule the next one. So that, you know, that list gets put out at the beginning of like the semester, basically. And so things could easily change throughout. Um, they, I think they send updated lists there. I don't know if it's every month, but maybe quarterly. Um, so it could be that that class has just not been scheduled yet. And while it's been going on a while, they're still working out all of the, the little pieces of it. So yes, please notify us because we can help the chancellor's office with improving the process. That is one thing when I met with them, what they were very clear about is that it's very unusual how everybody has things set up and how ITS has security and and not everybody's using CSU Learn the same way. So um, that feedback and you letting us know when there's a problem is actually really helpful for not only us, but across campus, because we want people to utilize these um, resources that the CO has put out there. Right. I think one of the great things about the, the being in the CSU is we have 22 other schools that we can connect with. And having Holly in this position is better than me trying to do it because <laughs> but, um, she can really focus on it. Like Joanne said, it's really the thing that she's doing. And so we have a lot of opportunity to make it better across the CSU. So yes, we want all your feedback. So uh, mm -hmm. we are not we are not sad about you giving us feedback. We know it's not perfect. We know it can everything can always be better, but the CSU wants to make this whole process better too as a whole. So we're excited about being a part of it we have not been part of the cross collaboration uh, before because we haven't had a course that we could put out there. Um, but uh, there are 20 campuses, I think, that are participating now. Is that right, Holly? I think we actually got up to 21. Oh, it's maybe 21 including us, maybe. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, it's an exciting thing. But yeah, definitely, definitely give us feedback on that because uh, we we definitely want to be able to get that back to the chancellor's office and to the other campuses. Okay. Uh, hey, I love the suggestion and the uh, Q&A from Florence. Um, if you check the link, she's connected to the wellness lounge that the Student Wellness Center has for students and asked, like, can we do this for staff? So great idea. I love it. Yeah, um, I have seen and, that page and it's really good. Yes, and so we're definitely taking that uh, in as, uh, you know, something maybe we can build towards. So thank you for that. Yeah, I think, as, as Holly said, I mean, she's just been here a couple, and we, a couple months and we basically said onboarding. <laughs> <laughs> onboarding, onboarding. Yeah, so yeah, we gave her a lot to do. That's been kind of her primary focus, but well-being is definitely in there. We know we want to expand that program and give you better resources, more resources, more opportunities to connect in that well-being space. So that's definitely on there. So thanks for bringing that up, Florence. I have seen that page. Mm -hmm. uh, Student Affairs has done a lot of really good work with well-being for students. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to collaborate with them too and see if there's anything we can do, you know, for our campus as a whole. Uh, certainly there'll be specific things focused for employees, but uh, yeah, that's great. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, yeah, I like this comment too, based on what Holly said, having an orientation for internal transfers would reinforce the choice they made to continue their careers at SGSU rather than jumping elsewhere. Would, yeah, absolutely right. Um, here's another question that came in. Could there be some kind of orientation for new student assistants? And, uh, or could we get their manager's training to best let them know their rights and responsibilities? 
I think that second part is more likely just because of the sheer number of student assistants and they're just hired all the time. But uh, that may be something that we work with like the Career Center on to look at uh, some resources for those hiring students and how to best get them onboarded. I don't know if you have any other thoughts on that, Holly. I know we talked a little, we actually did talk a little bit about this a while back. Yeah, I I may have left student affairs, but I have not left. <laughs> um, and so uh, having a student worker as well work with me, that is like something that's really important to me. And I was a student worker. That's actually how I got into this career. I was a student worker for the Office of Public and Alumni Relations when I was in my undergrad and a peer advisor for the study abroad program, which is why I went on to become an advisor. Um, so I think it's really, really important. And I'm a first gen. I'm the first in my family to not only graduate high school, but to graduate with a undergrad and a master's degree. So I believe, and I will never lose my status as a first gen professional because that is a fact. I have nobody else in my family to help guide me. And so having that kind of orientation for those students is really important to teach them the hidden curriculum that they just won't learn in the professional world. So I would love to collaborate with people like the career center and things like that. I don't think that we can do a live orientation, but when I used to manage my peer advising program, um, I had an asynchronous orientation. And so it was in Canvas and they were able to go through it and people were able to interact with it and things like that. So that might be something um, that we can manage is to create something that is more of an asynchronous orientation, but still teaches them and they can learn from it and they get the information that's important and include that really important aspect of their responsibilities, um, including getting trainings and, and things done. Um, to help us maintain that safe campus. Right, because students are also part of the compliance training. Student mm -hmm. employees are, so we need to make sure that they understand. Because I know sometimes it's confusing there too. Uh, you know, do we need to do these trainings? The answer is yes. I, I like the comment, I think that Carrie, you were just looking at it in the Q&A about the community, going out to the, having introduction to the community. Uh, I think that you mentioned, I know that's one of the ideas that you had too, Holly, about making sure that people understand the community around San Jose State, what's out there, right? and having a tour on that. So um, sounds like somebody else is also thinking the same thing. I really appreciate that. My, um, I'm very fortunate that I've been welcomed in the UP so well and my staff has just been like hey let's go to grocery outlet let's go eat let's go try things and i'm totally a foodie and they understand it's really all about food for us let's be good <laughs> it really is um but it's been really nice to have people go with me and introduce me to that and so i i do understand the value of that and i want to be able to give that to everybody on our campus and if that has to be my team doing it we're already doing it. We're happy to have you all join us and go for our walks, our mile walks and things like that at lunchtime too. So, but I would like to have it more structured and more consistent so that you all know what to expect and you can come. Um, so that is definitely a top priority um, for us. I'm just trying to get this onboarding and new employee orientation set and I won't say stone because it's going to be flexible, <laughs> but trying to get it set a little bit so that I can start incorporating those other things into it. And Tamala, didn't you do, I know for one of our uh, things that we did last year, maybe for a welcome, you did tours or somebody led tours last year, right? Were you? Yes. Involved? Yes. We, um, we collaborated with downtown San Jose and mm -hmm. they were the ones who conducted the tour, um, which is the surrounding areas of the campus. And so that was something that they're always open to do again. So as you were speaking and Alex, all they were talking, I was like, okay, well, maybe we can coordinate with them again mm -hmm. to um, to set those up. So, I mean, people were very excited. We got a lot of feedback about it. People enjoyed it. They saw things that they didn't see before. So, um, but that is always on the table. And one of the good things about it is downtown San Jose will be in attendance at the fair. That is one of our mm -hmm. new vendors this year. Oh, great. That's great. Great. Again, like these are great. I love reading these, all the suggestions that people have. They're great ideas. And again, it's like from getting this feedback from you, it just really energizes us to understand what everybody you know is interested in. So th those are great, great comments because yes, we're in this community around us. We need to you know, be involved with it. And we're in the community here on campus. We need to be involved with that. So the more we can show people what we have here, the better that we all understand what, what we have. We have a great campus and a great community around us. Okay. Do we have any other questions? We still have a few minutes, so we're happy to answer anything else. 
If someone wants to put in a question about what were all those links you shared, I'll type, I'll put them in the Q&A. <laughs> so I think you can copy them from the Q&A. Um, I, I was looking at... I was looking at some of the questions that you you answered, and, and there was one that you deferred, but I can actually answer it about the employee discount page. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I found this out too. Um, I want to make sure that you're logged into one.sjsu first before you click on the, empl the employee discount page because it's behind our login wall. And so if you're not signed in, you won't get it. I was like getting frustrated myself when I first started. I was like, how do I do this? It's not working. It's broken. It's not broken. I promise. Just make sure that you're logged in first because those are discounts for you all, not the public. And so it is behind a sign in. Um, that's why you get issues and it looks like it's broken. Do we have that? We should make sure that we put that on the page then. Right. We did. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. I think where it gets hard is when you're on your phone. Oh, I see. Yeah. It, as far as yeah. I yeah. yeah. When you're sitting on your desk, it's super easy because you're logged in. But if yeah, you're you're logged phone, in. Because okay. you can't just be logged in. Like you have to be literally logged into your Google site almost, right? Your whole Google account. So, because I hit it, I had the same problem. Yep. Yeah. But, but it is something that we look at to see, is there a better way we could do this? So uh, we, we continue to look at that and uh, and see, but we, we just want to make sure that, you know, those discounts are just going to SGSU employees. Oh, Remy just noted another thing too, is if you watch sports, employees get free admission up to four people to home games for our Spartan teams. That's right. Uh, All the Spartan sports. Yeah. All you have to do is bring your tower ID and you're good. You're in. And yeah. we've got to cool. meet a lot of the new coaches, assistant coaches, and things like that in new employer orientation. And I'm really excited about the energy that they're bringing to our athletics. So, mm -hmm. yes, I'm excited to show up to some of the games, too. Mm -hmm. Well, they're getting sold out, apparently. So get there first. Right. <laughs> the power cards. <laughs> Until they start charging us, they're going to be right. like, no, we don't need you in our seats anymore. <laughs> I didn't know the ticket number changed, so I can't answer that question. Why did the number of tickets change from four to two? Oh, I, I thought it was four. I thought it was four total. So we we can find out, but that that that's brand new information for us. So I don't know if anyone from athletics is on the call, but um, <laughs> uh -oh. that's fine. We'll find out and uh, we can try to answer that after the fact. And one of the new employees attended um, new employee orientation that works over in, in um, athletics that handles the tickets. And we mentioned the four and she didn't say anything, but then again, she's new. So what we can do is probably follow up with her um, to find out because that's new information as well. What was this question of the half marathon? Wait a minute. I think it right? Was like, I'm like, you're going to be my best friend. Let's go run. <laughs> <laughs> That, no, those are good. That's a great idea too. Like, you know, the, again, these events around here, are like, yeah, why do I have teams that are participating in these things, right? That's really cool. And I'm happy to put announcements in our well-being Wednesday for stuff like that so that we can make teams. So if there are events or things like that that you're a part of, I'm a runner. I haven't done my half marathon yet. I'm just doing 5Ks, but I am happy to add that to my list. <laughs> Okay. Well, I don't see any other um, questions coming in. Again, we will answer, and if you put any in that we've missed, we'll answer everything in our spreadsheet um, that we will share out with everybody. Like I said, hopefully we'll get that posted by end of next week and uh, we'll get everything uh, wrapped up and ready to go and let y'all know when it's out there so you can watch this entire thing again if you'd like. And, uh, and then we'll and go from there. I like this comment, this one in there about the reorientation. That's a great idea. It's a great idea. I think that's kind of what we were yeah. uh, kind of talking about. So this, this is the question is, what about an employee reorientation based on hiring full heart as in the year they were hired? The number of years you worked here really shapes your experience. It's absolutely true. It does. So I think that's another great idea of something we could do as part of the ongoing, you know, enrichment programs that we're doing mm -hmm. uh, for campus. You know, Holly's title is uh, manager of organizational development and enrichment programs. So I think that would fit nicely under that second half, right? And um, 
you know, there's a lot we want to do. We can't do it all at once. Obviously, there's only a handful of us. But, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of great things that um, that we could do and um, and figure out how to make this campus more connected, you know, more collaborative, and and just make it make us make it better for all of us. You know, it's not bad now, but everything can be better. Right? Well, I feel like seeing these comments in here, I think that people are, have been very, you know, thinking about these things, mm -hmm. right? They're very thoughtful about, you know, the ideas and their comments. And it's clear that people do think about this, you know, what, how, how do I, I'd like to be more connected or, you know, how about this? Or, I'm, I, you know, I, I need a refresh. I need to kind of be reoriented and I, I want to see my cohort and my peers. And um, so, you know, I think that we all want that connection. And so thank you for these great ideas. So one of the questions here um, is from someone in development and says they're always looking for places to take alumni and donors for lunch. Are there partners downtown that are more Spartan friendly than others? Hmm. Do you know, Tamala, off the top of your head? Um, I can't say that's more Spartan friendly, but we do have a lot of discount, um, a lot of restaurants around campus that offers discount to San Jose State. You just have to look on our discount page. It is, um, it should be on the employee discounts and it should say downtown San Jose. And it should have a list of places where um, where we can get a, a discount. At. I mean, cause I know we visit Tostadas quite a bit. Um, there's a place called Punjab, uh, which is down the street from Tostadas. I mean, like a couple of doors down rather. And he has reached out um, asking for people to come there and, and it's giving like a, a discounted plate option. So, so there's several places around. Is there, uh, did you already drop this, the, the, the link into the chat, Carrie, the employee discount or where that would be found just so people know? Just did. And yes, someone just posted Tostadas is closed due to fire damage. And oh. yes. Oh. Yeah, something oh. happened over the weekend. That right. the, whole, the whole little section right there is closed, so we're not quite sure, but yeah. Oh, wow. Boarded up at Tostadas, so just FYI. Yeah, so there's Lee Sandwich, there's um, Whispers, which is not far from campus as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's a nice place to go um, to sit with the vendor. Um, El Fernayo, they offer discounts to San Jose State. I think it's like 10, 15% off, that, which is over there, but I still call it the Fairmont. So um, not that far from the Fairmont, so about a block or two. So there's quite a few places around. And then you just need to mention or show your ID? Yeah, just show your entire ID card, yes. And I think, so as I'm seeing some of these comments about like the places and talk about discounts, I think it would be nice for us to build relationships with our community. And Pamela has done that. She's done a lot of outreach and talking to people. But yeah, if we can find a resource to help people or I'm kind of thinking, I'm obsessed with stickers, but I was thinking like if they had a sticker that says, you right. know, welcome support, SJSU yeah. people mm -hmm. here or support and they had it in the window, that Great would be idea. great. Um, so yeah, that's, I'm totally not against that idea. Idea that's actually like really great and gives me excuse to go eat more food around the campus. <laughs> no lies. I, I will think about that. So if anybody wants to go walking with me, please feel free to message me. And I did just put the link for the discount page in the chat. So if you click that, you should be able to open it. And again, you've got to be logged in in order to see it. Um, just because we like, we need to keep that behind a secured place. So not everybody gets those discounts. So essentially do it at your work computer. <laughs> do, it, do it at your, yeah. It's just hard on the phone specifically. So usually if you're on a laptop anywhere, you can, it's not a big deal, but it's the phone specifically that's a little bit more tricky. So, all right. Well, I think, uh, I think that'll wrap it up for today. Anything we didn't get to, we will, um, we will answer in the chat in our spreadsheet and follow up soon. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you for your great interaction and questions and feedback today. It's exactly what we want these sessions to be and helps us uh, get to hear from you, you hear from us, and hopefully we all learned a little today. Um, before you go, can you, I didn't know that. I just wanted to say that when you do go into the discount page, you have to kind of, you go in a couple links to, to get to the San Jose downtown where they have the list of restaurants. I can't post it because I restricted on my Wi-Fi in the chat. There's a specific San Jose downtown .com, sjdowntown.com slash SJSU for the restaurants that have the discounts. Looks like to me what I'm saying. 
And maybe so, in our so next, um, one of our next newsletters, we'll do a little bit more of a highlight on some of those discounts and that'd be cool. places downtown. Maybe we can do that. So we're happy with those kind of things. We'll put that in our Wellbeing Wednesday. I'll yeah. I'll announce that right now. That'll be in our next Wellbeing Wednesday. We'll do a discount um, revive or something just yeah. to explain we'll do it. A feature on discount. yes, there you <laughs> go. A feature. Insomnia cookies is on there, so I'm all on that. So you are yeah, one free classic cookie with one purchase. So <laughs> wow, where all right, it? anyway, never mind. <laughs> well, and. I just want to thank everybody too. And some of you have already started reaching yeah. out to me and I really appreciate it. And I'm excited to work with the San Jose community here. So please don't hesitate to, to connect with me. I'm excited. Thank you, everybody. Really, really thank appreciate your attendance. Have a great weekend. Yeah.